God is so good before prayer.
Please bow with me as we pray. Our Holy Father, we humbly bow before you this evening, acknowledging you as the one true and living God, thanking you for allowing us to be your children and to call upon you as our Father. We do that now in the name of Jesus Christ to ask for your intervention in the lives of some of those that are most close to us. Please intervene in all our lives, Father, and be an active part of our life. May the Holy Spirit be active in our hearts. May it help us understand your word, and as we study your word, may we understand what you would have us to do, how you would have us to live, to treat one another, so that we might be your children and it might be obvious to those around us that we are yours. As we just sung, Father, you are so good. You do answer prayer. And you do care for us. And because of these things, and because of who you are, we do love you so. Father, we pray for Brother Sham. We ask that you will comfort him and give him strength. Give him healing if it be within your will. We know that in your word you have encouraged us not to lose heart, but to always pray. So we pray on his behalf, and we ask, Father, that you would make him whole if it be in your will, that you would comfort him and give him strength and help us to be the right kind of encouragement to him by praying to you and continually asking for your hand to be upon him and upon Courtney, upon Katie. We pray your blessings upon that family. Father, there are many in this room right now that need your blessings of healing, of strength, and we pray for all of them. We are especially thankful to have Sister Holton back with us tonight and pray you'll continue to bless her healing and her recovery and help her to be fully recovered as soon as possible. Thank you, Father, for her presence here. Father, we pray that you'd be with Ashley Hall, with Lastly Hall's daughter, Ashley, that you would bless her and uh, give her strength be with that family as they help her through a very difficult time. We are encouraged to hear about Brother Ricky Brady and pray that things would go well for him after his transplant, that uh, he would regain his strength and health. And we pray, Father, that this uh, terrible event that's occurred in his life would draw him closer to you. We pray, Father, that you will bless him and guide him and bless his family also. We are thankful, Father, for Brother Young, Brother Bernie, and pray your blessings of healing upon him, his back and shoulder, and the uh, problems that he has been having lately. We pray for Sister Nancy and Brother uh, Matheny, that you would be with, with Sydney and be with both of them and bless her especially. We're thankful for Sister Joanne and pray your blessings upon her. Father, we pray for Brother Tony Allen as he recovers from a very serious surgery that's been six months, six weeks now since he had it, and he's still uh, struggling. We pray your blessings of strength. We're glad to hear that he is improving. We pray that that would continue, that you would bless him and Robbie, his wife, as she helps him. Father, we are grateful to live in this country. We understand that there are some shortcomings in our leadership and, and in our countrymen. But we are grateful for the way you have blessed the United States of America over the years, and we pray that those of us that are your children would uh, stand up for what is right and would try our best to be a good influence to those around us. We're aware that a half a world away, a terrible war is being waged right now, and we pray for our brethren in the Ukraine, for your children there, that you would bless and strengthen them and see them through this terrible time that you'd bless all the Ukrainians. And Father, we pray that your will would be done in that situation, that evil would be defeated, and that good would come from this. Father, we are thankful for those who serve us in this country as uh, first responders, those that are policemen, firemen, uh, EMTs, paramedics, those who serve in other capacities so that we might live a more comfortable life. Thank you for them. We pray your blessings upon them. and We pray, Father, that uh, 
that you will bless our president and our vice president, our Congress, that you will give them guidance, that you'll bless the judici judiciary, that our country might run as it has for years, and that we might get back to uh, being one nation under God. Thank you, Father, for the time to be here tonight, for Brother Mark and the lesson he's prepared. We pray that you'll open our hearts to the words that he speaks from your word and that it would help us to be better prepared to serve you tomorrow uh, than we were today. Thank you for Jesus Christ, for his death on Calvary's cross, the uh, greatest sacrifice in human history and unknown to so many and unappreciated by some that know. But, Father, help us not to take it for granted and not to forget that he who was God became flesh and blood and came to this world, lived among us without sin, and then took the guilt for our sin on his own shoulders when he went to the cross. Thank you for that kind of love, Father. Thank you for all you do to provide for our needs, prepare a way for us into the future, into eternity. Help us, O oh Lord, to look forward to that time and to do everything that we can to be prepared and to take as many with us as we can. Forgive us our sins. We love you, Father, and we appreciate you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And still no no news on Kyle and Sydney, right? Maybe maybe by the early part of the next week. Yeah. Um, we need to continue to remember Kyle and Sydney as they're expecting. And um, should get some good news, hopefully. Um, first part of next week so keep them in your prayers we have been looking at angels and talking about satan and had a question asked um, last week and we were discussing and um, about um, second peter chapter two and verse four and i, I was gonna go start with that one then then did not mark that page and by the way, several people have asked me if I have a, something wrong with my hand. That's the color of our new sh our shutters, the, the new color of our shutters. So if you want to see what they look like. So <laughs> it's not, I'm not trying a new fingernail polish. It's just did not wear gloves or whatever when I did that. But anyway, and evidently that, that paint works pretty well sticking to things. But Second um, Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. For God, if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment... And then he goes on from there. But you know, the angels who sinned, which we've talked about angels sinning, they were cast down out of heaven. But then here it says were, he cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And the, and the question that was asked was, how could they be cast down into hell and, and, and in chains and still be able to, you know, Satan's the prince of the power there. You know, he's a roaring lion seeking him he may devour and you have him going about. Um, and we discussed that some last week, so I did, I did some research on that and looked at, it, looked at it, and you can find out all sorts of things, and you have to kind of weed through everything, um, because there's so much mythology that people try to bring into it, the Greek mythology, and uh, the idea of what Greek mytho um, mythology teaches, and that has come over into so-called Christian belief, if you will, uh, because... I think some people try to say, well, Peter borrowed from Greek mythology to make a point here. Um, and I mean, you know, at times Paul did um, quote from some of the poets of the day. And so it would not be out of the question that something could be done in words that they could understand. But Greek mythology is not factual. I mean, you know, it's mythology about the, all these different gods and all fighting one another and different things happening. But in Greek mythology, Tartarus is the lower depths of the of Hades where the worst of the worst gets sent if my understanding is right I mean you know it's kind of the lower depths and that's where the worst of the gods and the worst of humans all get sent there um, for the the worst of the punishment if you will and there's different kinds of ideas on that but that's Greek mythology that's not scripture and so some have tried to um, look at that and say well that's what Peter's saying here with Tartarus that it's kind of the place it's the worst of the worst place for the devil and his angels to go. Uh, but if you look at it, that still doesn't answer the question. But if you also look at that phrase that's there, and I'm reading out of the, the New King James says, cast them down to hell. Um, the 
I think it says the same thing in the King James as well. I mean, cast them down to hell, 2 Peter 2, 4. Uh, all that, that phrase is, cast them down to hell is from that one word. And it's not Tartarus, it's a verb form of that, Tartaru. Don't hold me on, quote, on, on pronunciation there. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of transliterated into English a couple of different ways, but basically, instead of Tartarus, it's Tartaru. It's a verb form, not a noun form of it. It's, it's denoting an action. And you know, you think about Tartarus being in the, that, the down form of that being like the lower depths or whatever cast in, in a place of, of agony and darkness. The, I finally found some definitions on Tartarus. Just, I, I didn't want to get everybody's idea. I said, just give me a, what, what does it mean? And the actual definition of what that word Tartaru that's there literally means is the act of degrading and especially imprisonment, but then a place or condition into which one is degraded or imprisoned. It's, it can be a place, but it can also be a condition. Uh, it's the idea of being degraded, an idea of being imprisoned in some way. It may not be literal, but more of a figurative type prison. You know, people can be imprisoned by their emotions, by their feelings, by just, you know, feel like life is, you know, just kind of caving in on them. And I think when you look at this, he's saying, look, they have been cast down. They were degraded. I mean, they were cast down out of heaven in the presence of God. They were cast away from the presence of God. Uh, they are imprisoned in the sense of they cannot get away from the consequences of their sin and where their eternal judgment will be. In fact, ultimately, in Revelation 20 and verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. I mean, ultimately, the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, you know, what we think of as hell, I mean, they'll be cast there ultimately. But in the meantime... That's it. They are in prison. They're in chains to that, if you will. Uh, there's no getting away from that. They're waiting for the judgment, you know, in which, in which it's going to be, along with all the guilty, um, cast in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, the second death. But, um, but just the act of being degraded, of being cast down, cast out, hopeless, uh, imprisoned in that way, and so I think from what I, from what I have seen and understood, the best explanation I have heard is it doesn't mean that they are actually in you know, a place of torment, like Satan's in a place of torment at this time, but it's set for him to go there. He has, he has been lowered and he's been cast out of heaven, but he does have some freedom, if you will. I mean, he's bound by God and by the power of God. And we'll see that in some of the lesson in a few minutes. But he does have freedom to roam about as a roaring lion seeking to devour us. And you have some, you know, the angels that followed him or whatever that can work as his minions, if you will, as well. Now, some have, have tried to say it's, you know, and, and look at it. And I've heard some conservative commentators as well try to say there is a, you know, it's, the, it's a literal place that some of them, some of the fallen angels are. And that God has allowed the devil and some of the angels out to do work. And some of them are reserved there in that place. But he's let some of them out for a out till the end of time to do that but anyway um it, it there, there's definitely a play, a waiting place i mean you think about the hadean realm there's paradise there's torment gehenna um if you will uh, the two sides of it the rich man lazarus shows us that as well but i think when you look at this in this particular passage it might be kind of wording something a little bit different. I mean, it's just saying, look, they were cast down. They, they were cast out of heaven. They are now in a hopeless situation of where they're waiting eternal judgment and ultimately the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. But it does not keep them at the, that those, whatever chains they're in at this point doesn't keep them from being able to function on this earth and, and, and tempt us and try us. Other thoughts on that? If anybody's done any research reading. The word Hades and Gehenna, that's two different things. Right. There's the Hadean or unseen realm. Right. That's that kind of encompasses. The final hell, which is the Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I may have used it. I mean, you have, you have basically what well, in our terminology you would have the Hades and you have paradise on, on one part and you have torment on the other part. I mean, those are the two parts. Now, ultimately, there's going to be 
what we normally think of as hell, the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, the second death, that's going to be the ultimate destination of the wicked, and heaven will be the ultimate des destination of the righteous. In fact, um, where is the um, place where it's over? In Re Let me see. I turned off of that just a minute ago. Where I had it a little earlier, and where in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, I meant Hades will be, you know, ha the Hadean realm will be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Um, okay, Revelation 20 and verse 14, then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. I mean, so that temporary place is not needed anymore. It's kind of cast, cast into that. But the question was asked last week, how can you have what Second Peter says and then still have the roaring lion? Um, if you look at the fact that we know that angels do not have a plan of salvation, they don't have a second chance. It is set, they're, they're kind of, like you think about a prisoner in chains waiting, but at the same time, those, it's whatever type of chains, if you will, kind of, kind of figurative sense there, because they are allowed, um, the devil is allowed certain freedom, if you will, to, to, to go out and attempt us. Other thoughts? Do what? Right. So what is the what is the third heaven and how many heavens do we have? I've heard somebody say we have seven. Well, I mean, you talk about like normally we think of like the first the first heaven is we think about in the sense of the air and where the birds fly and the in in the cloud that yeah, okay, atmosphere, that's where I'm going. And where the clouds are and all that within our atmosphere. Um, that's what that's one terminology of heaven. The second heaven would be in the sense of where the sun, moon, and stars, planets, you know, outer space is what we think of. I mean, again, that's not what we normally think of as heaven, but that's how that term can be used. The third heaven will be what we think of as that spiritual realm. You know, you know. so that, that's really the, the true, what we think, think about now. And, we, and I'm, you don't get into things where, what is, what's some of the beliefs where they have that you kind of work your way up the scale to different, to different heavens? Well, that's not, that, I mean, you know, when you get to like seventh, all those, I don't, I don't remember who is that that does some of that stuff. But anyway, uh, do what? Yeah, okay, now you have, yeah, then you can get into purgatory and all that stuff, but um, which is kind of where you can work, that's where you, you kind of. It's not in here. No, I mean, yeah, purgatory is a different thing where you kind of work your way, you, you kind of burn off your sins, so to speak. You, you go and suffer for a while to pay for your sins, but you can get your way out of it, and eventually you've suffered enough and you can go to heaven. That's not in the scripture. Um, I remember who was, um, what was um, Dale Earnhardt when he was killed? Some of his family was saying, "Oh, I, I know he's got to go to purgatory, but maybe he wants to stay there too long." That's the way they. And I thought, you know, that that's kind of a, I guess it's a comforting thought to some, but I mean, that's not what the scriptures say. Though I mean, it's, it's not there's not anything like that. And then when you look at the heaven, there's just one true heaven when we think about the eternal abode of the saved, and uh, it's the place that the Lord's gone to prepare. But the term can be used in the sense of our atmosphere, outer space, and then what we think of, you know, Paul was caught up into, what, the third heaven? Uh, he's saying basically heaven itself. Other thoughts? What's that? Well, uh, yeah. What do you think? I mean... No, I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, yeah, when you go, it's a, you, you, the rich man lifted up his eyes and tore him yet. Lazarus was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So that's, and some will say, well, that's just a made up story. Well, Jesus told it as fact. And so if Jesus used it as fact, it's, a, it's fact. Well, now this is, I'm talking about angels here, though. Yeah. So. So what about the roaring lion then? How, how can Satan be a roaring lion if he's in? How can he be walking around? How can if, if, if he's going to and fro on the earth? Right. Okay, but not not the devil though is what you're saying. Part of his clan is, and that, that is one that that's that's a strong view of some that 
that they're definitely there are people that are literally cast into that waiting place like we go to when we die that those angels are there waiting for that are waiting for that but that satan's allowed to still go about in roaring line that that is one interpretation and again it depends on how you look what there in second peter chapter two like i said that i think i think some have kind of built up some things on that a lot of what's being said there um right so i mean i guess what i'm saying is in second peter it can be talking of a of them the, the fact that they're put into a literal place or it could be talking about just the very fact if you're cast out of heaven that's not a good thing no matter where you wind up but the end result of them ultimately is going to be the same as all wicked the end results hell and, and saved heaven but now what you're talking about is in the intermediate and that's where you get to a discussion of i know any person that dies goes to a waiting place you know it's either you know, paradise or torment but is it the same for the angels in the meantime fail in the meantime um right right okay No. Well, he did say that's not in the Bible. So. <laughs> right. Right. I've never insinuated there's a real place of birth. Okay. It's standing up here. It, it, purgatory is standing up here, refereeing between people. That's what it is. And I'm, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, yeah. Right. Hades. Hades being two places. All human beings when they die right. go there. Including Christ went there. Right. That's where he was in paradise. But now his question was, is it the same for the angels when they fell? I mean, do they do the angels just like a sinful angel, does he go to torment until the judgment and then cast into hell? And um you know, again, ultimately, there's not, they're ultimately going to hell, but there's at least some of the devil and his angels, at least, are out, allowed to be out doing some work here on earth. Okay. So, so if it is, there's still, there's still a portion that God, at least, you know, like you look at the devil and I think some of his angels, there's still a portion that was allowed some free reign on this earth for the purpose, you know, for evil purposes um and again that's that was the two the two thoughts i've seen from most people that look at that would be what you just said and that kind of fits in with everything else the only other thing would be is if i mean but even if that's true then the devil still is allowed roaming around okay so um it'd be kind of nice if he wasn't wouldn't it it'd be kind of yeah uh, but but ultimately the end result of all of this is where's Satan and all his angels going? To hell, aren't they? Ultimately. I mean, that, they're not going to hear, well done, or you've been forgiven, or you can go to purgatory for a little while. It's forever. It's, it's the lake that burns with fire and brim, brimstone. It, it's for sure for them. And of course, now, when you lift, if you lift up your eyes in torment, that waiting place, you, you, you'll get a day of judgment. I mean, you'll, you'll hear the sentencing and all that. But it's not going to change. I mean, if you're if you're in the fire at that point, you go be at the fire later. If you're in the paradise side, you're going to go to heaven. You know, I mean, so you know, it's, it, you know, but um, there there will be a, an official judgment day. Um, stand before the Lord and be able to give an account and be able to either here depart from me or well done. But the, people are going to understand why they are where they are. I mean, whether it's through the blood of Christ, the grace of God. And, and you, you trying to, to live the Christian life that you go to heaven or if it's um, a person that um, did not acknowledge God or Christ or a person that was not a faithful child of God. I mean, they may not like it. I mean, you look at the rich man. He didn't argue that he didn't deserve to be there. He just begged that he could go back and warn his brothers. I mean, he, he understood you know, he he chose a path that led him to where he was. And I mean, every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess, everyone's going to submit to God's will at that point. Um, you know, and it's, um, 
It's better to submit to the will of God now than it is to try to then. Other thoughts? Why would that be? A, Why would it be good for them? What's good for? Them? What's what about being here? For God put, I know for a fact that God put Satan. He kicked him out of heaven and he put him here. And so, he stayed here. So why is he here? To give us a choice. Okay. He's going to tempt. But I guess does does a Satan does Satan have pleasure? I guess. I mean, is he happy? Is he, loves company um, or if I can't be you know you, you listen sometimes when somebody's trying to better themselves and, and other people that aren't they kind of pull, try to pull them back down to their level to make themselves feel better or whatever whatever it may be it's not going to change his end result but um, he's going to try to carry as many of us with him as he possibly can um, the work of Satan is an evil work it's a sinful work and that is what we've been looking at um, other thoughts on that I mean, we, you start, you're talking about him here on earth. I mean, we, we, we looked at some of these about him, you know, the sin began with him. I mean, he, he, he was a liar from the beginning. Um, well, he was filled with pride, um, sinful pride, to the point that he tried to overthrow in heaven. Um, he lied there in the Garden of Eden and um, says he was a murderer from the beginning. I mean, you know, you look at bringing death into the world as a result of getting them to sin as well. Um, in, in talking about death in the spiritual sense, um, he he tries to get us to sin. You know, I I, I have. I mean, he did it face to face with the Lord, but you know, he can he still is maybe behind the scenes somewhat, or how, however he does however he does what he does, or working through individuals, he still tempts us. And I mean, you we we can be tempted by the devil today, but understand, he's trying to get us to sin. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate people that try to encourage me or encourage others to do right, but then you see somebody that's trying to get someone to do wrong, uh, you know, and you, you see so much of that in the world today, and that's what Satan wants. He wants us to sin, to, to go against God's will, and we mentioned about snares, you know, about um, about um, I would tell what happened to me the other day fishing, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too nice about the fish. No, I. I was was fishing and I cast out and hooked the uh, hooked the bass and it broke my line. For the next hour, was out there fishing. That fish kept jumping up, trying to sling that lure. It still had the lure in its mouth and it kept trying to sling it out. I finally it stopped. It stopped jumping. I'm hoping it slung it out. I hate the thought of it um, going around with that lure stuck in its mouth. Of course, I didn't hate the thought of taking the fish home and. Um, cleaning it and eating it, but I, I hated I hate for the thought. But he didn't like that snare. He, I mean, he didn't like that lure. He didn't like that that hook. And that's what Satan's after us to get us. I mean, he he wants he wants to. Not, how big was that fish? Oh, about thirty pound thirty pound bass. Yeah, <laughs> that it was that big between the eyes. You know, no, it's it's probably about a a two or three about a two two and a half pound bass probably. Yeah, um, yes. And it wasn't a child's house, carry. Yeah. Satan doesn't, he doesn't have to have us out there killing people or committing adultery and all that kind of stuff. Just get you don't care. I mean, you know, just, just kind of lukewarm. Jesus said, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Just get lukewarm Christians. If he has you there, make, make, if you think you're comfortable like you are and you're really not as faithful as you should be, Satan's got you where he wants you. And, and, but I mean, you know, it, it, it and because it, it makes us feel like, hey, I'm okay, and you're really not. Um, um, he takes the word out of men's heart. We meant, we were, we discussed that last week, and we're not going to go back through that as well. Um, he's the one that puts wicked purposes into the hearts of men. Don't give place to the devil. You know, give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Give him a foothold, and you, it's hard to close that door back again. Um, he wants to blind us to the light of the gospel. I mean. He wants us walking in darkness. Now, people think they're enlightened, and really they're in darkness. And um, you know, he, he tries to blind us to the truth. And people can harden their heart. 
and their mind to the truth or, or have it focused somewhere else rather than on the truth harasses righteous men. Paul had that thorn in the flesh. And we could discuss, if you're going to get in a big discussion, we can discuss what was Paul's thorn in the flesh. It does not say, so we could suppose. Um, uh, I, I had somebody, uh, somebody tell me one time he was short, fat, and bald-headed, and I said, I, I'm offended. <laughs> That's a, I said, I'm not really short, but I'm not tall. And uh, at that time I was at my heaviest, and then I am bald, bald. But anyway, I said, what's wrong with that? But um, it, um, some said um, poor eyesight, so maybe some other health problems, whatever. It could be just a number of different things. But whatever the case was, Satan was working on him and trying to get... Somebody sent me a picture and said I need to put a tattoo. Anyway, Satan will, I mean, he, he will work on us. I mean, remember with, with Peter, Satan wants to get you and sift you as, will sift you as wheat. I mean, he's going to put you through the ringer, we'd say. But he, he will harass righteous men. He is the accuser. It's nice to have someone in your corner that will stand there and say, I have your back. Or, I'll, you know, I'll, if, if you want me to put in a good word for you. And, and, and we appreciate that. But then to have one that's an accuser, and it's one thing to be accused when you're guilty, but it's another thing to have someone try to accuse you and get you in trouble for something that you know you haven't done, you know, just to try to, to turn it around on you and use something against you, um, something good, turn it into something bad. He is the accuser. It says, um, you know, then I heard a loud voice from heaven say, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. To accuse us day and night. So we'll, we'll stop there and we'll pick up with that next week. I do appreciate the discussion. Talking about the, the devil and his angels here lately and kind of working our way back around to the book of Jude again. But you know, resist the devil and he will flee from you, James 4 says. I mean, we talk about the power of Satan, and we've looked at the power of Satan, and we, talk, we mentioned tonight that he was cast down out of heaven. His, his ultimate destination of hell, I mean, he's bound and headed, headed that direction. In a sense, I mean, he, he can't change his eternal destination. And so he's powerful, but he's not all powerful. But he is evil. He says, but the answer to... Not having to say, well, the devil made me do it. Well, the devil can't make you do something against your will. He said the answer to the devil is to resist him. You know, sometimes the, the answer is obvious. How can I overcome Satan? Well, resist him. Resist the devil. And guess what? He will flee from you. He doesn't like that resistance. And, and he can work on it. It doesn't say it won't be a struggle, that it won't be a fight. It doesn't say it will not be difficult at times because it will be difficult at times. But he said, if you will resist the devil, you know, try that. You know, Jesus said, get, get behind me, Satan, at one point. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. On the other hand, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Some people draw near to Satan and they resist God. That's not the answer, is it? Resist the devil, draw near to God. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You know, Live a pure life, live a holy life. And ultimately the cleansing comes through the blood of Christ when we're buried with Christ in baptism. We come into contact with his death, with his blood. We can rise up in newness of life. Don't be double-minded. Focus your attention on Jesus Christ. Be mournful and weep over the sin in our life. Be penitent. There's times that we shouldn't be laughing. There's times that we should be sad. We should be penitent. Not, not, not just making fun of our sins, but acknowledging them and repenting of them. But ultimately, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. You look at Satan, his big sin was pride. And look at all the trouble it caused him and many others as well. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Do you need to respond to the Lord's invitation tonight in any way? Do you need to become a Christian, need prayer, whatever need you have? Won't you come while we stand and while we sing?